this first video in my new series, an introduction to Bajrigar genetics. This series is meant to be just an introduction and no in-depth analysis or study of Bajrigar genetics. It's aimed at those beginners who really, just like me when I first started out, wanted to find out a little bit more about the uh, genetics and why certain colours uh, were produced by certain birds. I suppose there was two things for me really when I started out and what made me think that I would like to get a little bit of a better understanding around genetics was first um, a bird that showed up when I was breeding um, a sky blue with a light green, very similar to the two birds here. So I had a light blue cock and I had a, um, a normal green um, hen and I bred the two together and as you might expect most of uh, the young that came out were um, standard greens. However, um, in one nest I found a rather unusual bird. Um, it started off with pink eyes, so I thought it was a, a Lutino. Um, I'll introduce you to that bird now. Well, here we go. This is, um, well, it's actually, I think, a, a younger cousin of the actual bird that was um, bred, but it's exactly the same style. So, um, from the sky blue and the light green, I discovered I had this rather unusual looking bird at the time. It was the first breeding season, so I had no idea what it was. Um, asked around, it, my initial thought was that it was a, a rather badly marked Lutino because um, the pink eyes and clearly the lacking of colour. Um, but on further study, it turned out that it was actually a lacewing. So my next question, of course, was how on earth did I get a white lacewing, um, and it was a hen rather like this one that's actually a cock, a light lacewing um, cock off of a sky blue and a normal green. Uh, the other thing that made me um, perk up my interest, I suppose, in trying to understand genetics was some of the terms that um, regular people would use, other um, more experienced Budgerigar um, breeders would use, things like um, single factor and double factor and recessive and dominant and all those various terms that everybody banders around and we all sort of nod as if we understand and I wanted to actually find out what exactly we meant when someone talked about a double factor or a single factor um, or dominant and recessive. So I started to have a quick look and very sh it was found it relatively simple to try and um, get my head around the basics of it. Um, clearly the detail is a much more complex issue. Um, but having looked at a few of the, I read a few articles and looked at a few books um, I began to get a better understanding and then discovered that I was able to predict why I managed to get this type of bird out of the sky blue and the light green and what other birds I might be able to get out of various pairings. And in particular how I could fix the idea of having a, I suppose, a, a number of um, lace wings in my stud and how I could make sure that I didn't lose them um, by breeding the wrong birds to the wrong birds. What I would say to anybody who's starting out on breeding budgerigars, um, particularly exhibition, and if you're going to show them, is of course the first and most important thing to do is to breed a good bird and then worry about the colour later. I remember when I first started out, someone saying to me, I mean, it, once you've bred a good bird, you can paint the colour on at another time. So anyway, let's have a more detailed look at what we mean by genetics. And the, I suppose the best place to start is exactly that. What do we mean by genetics? So let's take a quick look at exactly what we mean by genetics then. Before I do so, you'll notice that behind me uh, the scene has changed very slightly. I've been preparing um, a number of birds for the Oxford 19 Ken uh, Cage Bird Society um, annual members show. Um, a video of that show will be on the uh, website, so please feel free to um, take a look at that. Well, the study of genetics is really just talking about the, the study of how one feature or one trait is passed from uh, the parent bird onto um, the offspring. So, or in the case of humans, for example, how someone with uh, blue eyes passes those blue eyes onto their child, or someone with blonde hair passes that blonde hair on to uh, their offspring. I, I expect my son's really dying or praying that he doesn't inherit my bald headed gene, although I'm sure he's pleased that he's inherited my extremely good looks. These traits are, are controlled by things called genes, and the genes exist in um, every cell that we have in our body, and likewise every cell that, we, that the um, budgery guards have. So let's have a bit of a closer look at these cells. This rather badly drawn picture by myself uh, re represents a cell, and we can look at the various uh, bits of it, or the parts of, that the cell has. So the outside rectangular bit, that's the outside of the, the 
the cell and if we then look towards the inside we can see a circular sort of shape. This is known as the nucleus. Contained within the nucleus are the chromosomes in this picture. These chromosomes are represented by the small squiggly sort of worm type objects. Each cell is constantly being made um, and cells constantly die and as your body reproduces the new cells there is always a risk that some of these uh, chromosomes are copied incorrectly and that cause a genetic change to those various chromosomes. So now we've looked at the individual cell, let's take a closer look at the chromosome. In this picture here, this is a typical representation of a pair of chromosomes. Each pair contains an identical set of genes. If we think of the genes as just being those banded lines that are represented on the picture. The thing you need to remember about genes is that um, the genes on each set of chromosomes are in exactly the same place. So the chromosome that controls the colour green or the colour blue in a budgerigar is exactly the same place on each pair of chromosomes. Most of um, our cells and that of a budgerigar cell contain a pair of chromosomes. There's a special um, group of cells that we'll talk about a bit later that only contain one set of chromosomes. We said that the two sets of chromosomes um, are identical and that each gene on those chromosomes is held in the same place. We refer to that same place as the locus. So the locus of a gene is exactly the same in each chromosome, irrespective of um, whether that gene has changed over time or, or been modified over time or not. It remains in exactly the same locus. So, for example, if the gene uh, that controls the colour of the budgerigar uh, modifies to blue, it doesn't, it doesn't produce a new gene. It's the same gene that made the budgerigar green in exactly the same place, but it's now mutated and become blue. So if we do have a gene um, that's modified, so say uh, the, the, green, the gene that controls the colour of the budgerigar is modified from green to blue, we refer to this as, a, as an analyse. So a different version of the same gene is referred to as an analyse. It's important to remember that the analyse is just a different version of the same gene. Well, there's one special type of uh, cell that only contains one uh, set of chromosomes rather than the usual pair, and that's the sex cell. So, for example, the um, sperm on the cockburn only contains one uh, chromosome, and the uh, egg on the hen bird only contains one chromosome. Clearly when the two join and form a new bird that gives it its um, pair of chromosomes. Now there is always a, a chance that it will inherit um, the same uh, chromosome. So for example the, the chromosome that contains the green gene is inherited from the um, cock bird and the chromosome that contains the uh, green gene is inherited from the hen. Where this is the case this is known as homozygous. Where they're different though, so where there's an alice of uh, the green chromosome, perhaps it's uh, making it blue, um, this is known as heterozygous. Well those are the final two terms that you, you really need to know, so um, where the two are the same it's known as homozygous, and where the two are different it's known as heterozygous. What I'll do now is I'll just put the uh, terms that we've learned up on the screen so we can just go through them. So we learnt that um, the, the body is made up of a, a number of cells and that these cells contain a nucleus and within the nucleus there are pairs of chromosomes. We also know that the um, pair of chromosomes are inherited one from the father and one from the mother, so one from each of the two birds. We know that the chromosomes contain the genes and that these genes are in the same place on each set of chromosomes. And we know that this place where the um, gene is held is referred to as the locus. We've also learnt that the genes can be slightly different and where they are different this is known as an alice. So where the um, green gene is mutated into, the, into a blue gene it's in the same location and it's called an alice. We've also learnt that where both the two um, genes are identical this is known as homozygous and where the two genes are different this is known as heterozygous. Well, thanks for watching this first video. I hope you've enjoyed it um, and come back for the second video where we'll learn a little bit more about budgerigar genetics.